coming up on Cronkite News. A local organization is creating temporary shelter for people in need. Learn how this strategy could lead the way to finding employment and permanent housing. Plus, engineers are working on new technology meant to keep you safe while bike riding. We'll talk more about cycling and the team of students working on a smart bike. And later on Break It Down, how to use your vision as a tool for growth. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Raina Preciado. And I'm Mitchell Zimmerman. Thanks for joining us. Today, Chicanos por la Causa celebrated the grand opening of the Corazon Transitional Shelter in Phoenix. Cronkite News reporter Valeria Rodriguez shares what this means for the community. This small house in Phoenix has the potential to change someone's life. A lot of times they don't have a place to live, they may not have a job lined up, and so it, it becomes very difficult for them to maintain their sobriety. The New Corazon Transitional Shelter provides bedding, food, and bilingual services to the community. It also serves people of a variety of ethnic backgrounds. Uh, pretty much everyone who qualifies, everyone who wants to work in learning how to live their lives without doing any drugs or alcohol. Jalen Jones is one of the eight men that will be living in this shelter after completing the substance abuse residential treatment program on the same campus. But here you learn forgiveness, how to forgive yourself before you can forgive others. Chicanos por la Causa wants to be able to help people like Jalen who are in the transitional period where they hope to re-enter society. While they're here with us, they will be able to get some help looking for jobs. We'll help them with resume writing if needed, interviewing skills if they need that. The shelter will be funded by donations and a small rent rate for those living in the home. In Phoenix, Valeria Rodriguez, Cronkite News. Chicanos por la Causa has been providing substance abuse treatment through its residential treatment center since 1983. President Joe Biden has been looking for ways to end Title 42, the pandemic era rule that allows border agents to quickly turn migrants away due to the public health crisis. Yet a federal judge has now blocked his administration from doing so. The block may keep the Biden administration from ending Title 42 by the end of May as it is planned. Arizona has joined several other states in filing a lawsuit in federal court to keep Title 42 in place. The federal judge's block will keep the Biden administration from lifting Title 42 until the case is heard on May 13th. At the beginning of April, the CDC announced that Title 42 was no longer necessary due to public health conditions and vaccine availability. The CDC said it planned to terminate the restrictions on May 23rd. On Monday, Governor Doug Ducey signed legislation that bans government agencies from requiring COVID-19 vaccinations. The laws he signed also forbid schools from mandating masks for students under 18 unless their parents approve of them. The ban on vaccine ma mandates applies to state agencies as well as local governments. Hospitals owned by the government are exempt from the ban. The two bills were backed solely by Republican members in the legislature. Federal health officials maintain that wearing a mask when case numbers are high greatly limits the spread of COVID-19. They also said that getting vaccinated prevents death and the risk of serious illness. Ducey has recommended COVID-19 vaccinations and masks, but not mandates. Coming up, students at NAU are working on a project to innovate bike safety. We'll take a closer look at how the students work to keep cyclists safer on the streets. Hey, I'm Rick Steves. You know, I don't go anywhere without my passport. And now, thanks to PBS Passport, you can travel with me and watch all 10 seasons of Rick Steves Europe and all my travel specials. This exclusive streaming service is just for our members. Not only can you see all my shows, but you can see thousands of hours of your favorite public television shows. Become a member today and get your passport. Did you know newsrooms today are looking for bilingual journalists? Cronkite Noticias prepares you to cover diverse communities. In Cronkite Noticias, you will obtain an unforgettable experience. Nopales como este. The Ducey. Van a tumbar. Cronkite Noticias. And develop your skills with the latest technology.
Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Arizona ranks high as a dangerous state for bicyclists, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. But a team of engineers and students at Northern Arizona University want to make cycling safer with a sensor that picks up on dangers, according to Cronkite News, Atria Maneshni. A sensor. That is the brain of the, the whole system to revolutionize biking safety. We're gonna see a change right here. Is coming out of an engineering lab at NAU. A dedicated team of students have been working on these sensors since last year. Like on a weekly basis, we probably spend like 10 hours a week at least working on it. The idea started back in 2018, when vehicles with safety technology were becoming popular. The engineering team decided to try similar technology on a bicycle. So that's what we thought that would be a good opportunity for us to start a project that we study how do we connect those bicycles together to build a network for cyclists. The students did hands-on work to figure out how to develop efficient sensors. Also coming up with the layout for the system container was pretty fun because we had to figure out how to uh, optimize it so it was space efficient and there's no like overheating with any of the components and stuff. So Figuring all this out is meant to make cycling more enjoyable and safer. Cycling in the U.S. isn't a common way to commute, but here in Flagstaff, about 8% of people use bikes to get around. We kind of have this uh, category of bicyclists that we call uh, interested but concerned, or maybe they're interested in, in using a bike, but they don't, if they don't feel safe on the facility, they, they likely won't. The bike sensors could help. Each sensor identifies potential hazards and detects bumps in the road. So if there's a crack or like a stick that you run over, uh, it has an X, Y, and Z axis, so however you run over it, those axes will change. By running some initial tests, the students have found that... So this is a pretty rough road. There are lots of cracks in the bike lanes in the Flagstaff area. The sensors are paired with a mobile app, and once the hazard is detected, the cyclist will be notified of its location so they can avoid it and ride safely. We're doing this project to show people where is a bomb so the government or the clients will know there is a bomb they need to fix or there's a very big bomb so you need to watch out. Ho and his team hope that cycling becomes a safe and popular form of transportation with this technology. If we can provide safer informed cycling environment that the people are willing to use cycling as their daily transportation mode. In Flagstaff, Atria Maneshni, Cronkite News. The next steps for these engineers are to create a prototype bike and potentially manufacture it in the future. Some Arizonans are starting to feel the summer heat. Andrea Villalobos joins us now in the Cronkite News Weather Center with more on these warming temps and our state's wind speeds. Good evening, Arizona. We are definitely seeing some higher wind speeds tomorrow. You can see in Flagstaff will be about 19 miles an hour and 20 in Tucson around 4.30 p.m. on Wednesday. And coming into Thursday afternoon, about 22 miles an hour in Flagstaff and 20 in Tucson. You can also see that reflected on this map here as that low pressure system comes up, passes us by, but it will um, definitely affect those temperatures in San Francisco and Los Angeles as that tail end comes in, of course, followed by a high pressure system. But you can see those temperatures reflected here. We can see that San Francisco will be at about 50 59 degrees Los Angeles at about 69. Unfortunately for us, our temperatures are a little bit spicier. We're looking at about 94 degrees, so definitely not looking at those 60s like they have in California. But if you are heading on a run, definitely make sure tomorrow morning you head out around 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. is when those conditions will be way better for you to go out and get that exercise. But 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. is when it will get a lot warmer out there, so definitely be careful if you're heading out around that time. Looking at our eight day forecast, you can see again tomorrow we will have some cloud coverage with that 94 degree high, but coming into that weekend, Saturday and Sunday will be about 95 degrees and that actually is going to be continuing throughout the rest of the week. We do have some cloud coverage over the weekend, but we are still staying in those mid 90s. In the Cronkite Weather Center, I'm Andrea Villalobos. I'm Lindsay Zinti. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. Throwing a no hitter is one thing. Throwing four in a row is quite another. 
This high school pitcher's historic run is next. Hey, I'm Rick Steves. You know, I don't go anywhere without my passport. And now, thanks to PBS Passport, you can travel with me and watch all 10 seasons of Rick Steves Europe and all my travel specials. This exclusive streaming service is just for our members. Not only can you see all my shows, but you can see thousands of hours of your favorite public television shows. Become a member today and get your passport. Did you know newsrooms today are looking for bilingual journalists? Cronkai Noticias prepares you to cover diverse communities. In Cronkai Noticias, you will obtain an unforgettable experience. Nopales como este. The Ducey. Van a tumbar. Cronkai Noticias. And develop your skills with the latest technology. Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Welcome back to Cronkite News. I'm Lindsay Zinti, and this is your Cronkite Sports Report. The Suns' playoff series with the Pelicans is all tied up at two games apiece. The pivotal Game 5 tips off at Footprint Center tonight. The Suns will once again be without Devin Booker, and head coach Monty Williams, well, he will be without some extra cash. He was fined $15,000 for criticizing the refs after Game 4. The Suns, however, will have the home crowd behind them tonight. We can't expect to sweep people. You know what I'm saying? It would be lovely to do it. But they're in the NBA, too. They got, they got, uh, they got elite scorers also. You know what I'm saying? So we got to respect them at the same time. A couple of blocks away, the Diamondbacks host the Dodgers in Game 2 of a three-game series against their division rival. Downtown Phoenix will be crawling with sports fans. Yesterday, the Diamondbacks dropped Game 1 to the Dodgers 4 to nothing, thanks to an amazing performance from Dodgers starting pitcher Walker Bueller, who threw a complete Game 3 hit shutout. He also struck out 10. Let's see if the Diamondbacks' bats can come alive tonight. Baghdad is a small mining community in northwestern Arizona and has one of the top 1A high school baseball teams in the state. Cronkite News reporter Hayden Weber introduces us to pitcher Connor Watson, who put the Copper State on notice with a historic no-hitter streak. With plenty of high school baseball talent across the board in Arizona, no one has been able to accomplish what Baghdad pitcher Connor Watson did over the stretch of four straight starts. He threw four consecutive no-hitters, a feat that few believe has ever been done. Oh, no, I've never came close, close to that, but I have dreamed of it. The streak came to an end at four against Benjamin Franklin High School, but Watson collected a pair of hits and two RBI in the game, showcasing his versatility. Not only is he a force on the mound, but he can also swing the bat and play behind the plate. Oh, I do take pride in it. Like, I just try to focus. No, I don't try to focus on one simple thing. I try to focus on both of them at the same time. That way I stay consistent with both of them. Three of Watson's no-hitters were caught by one of his best friends, Keelan Lucero. Head coach Dalton Mills has seen the two grow up together, improving their chemistry over time. Since they're like in elementary school, like I've seen them growing, growing up playing like Pop Warner, like youth baseball together. So uh, I've known them for quite a while. I also coach football. They're like quarterback running back combo too. Coach Mills believes his team has adopted the blue collar attitude of its community. The team remains focused on the task at hand. And that's to return right here to Tempe Diablo Stadium to compete for and win the state championship. We're a good team. We have a lot of energy. We come out and play hard. Uh, and I think we can take it this year for sure. Winning the championship would cap off a special season for Watson and the Sultans, who caught the attention of the entire state with their play. 
In Tempe, Hayden Weber, Cronkite News. The Coyotes season is almost over as they have just three games left. They open a back-to-back -back road trip tonight in Minnesota before returning home Friday to finish the season. That will be their final game at Gila River Arena. That's all for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Mitchell. Dr. Cyan Proctor is a local community college professor and the first black woman to pilot a spacecraft. Ashley Hudjaleski was at an event at South Mountain Community College where they honored Dr. Proctor for her remarkable work. Do hereby proclaim April 25th, 2022 is Dr. Cyan Proctor Day. And Proctor is a decades long geology teacher and researcher at South Mountain Community College. In 2021, she fulfilled her childhood dream of being an astronaut when she piloted a commercial flight into space. Neither of my parents had college degrees, and so for me to be able to go and, and uh, achieve this was such a big thing, not just for myself, but for my family. At a presentation at South Mountain Community College, Dr. Proctor spoke to about 40 people regarding her journey to success. She highlighted a poem that she videotaped for her application for the commercial space flight. Consider sending a poet who knows how to rhyme. So let's drop the mic and close the capsule door. But please make sure Dr. Proctor is on board. <laughs> Dr. Proctor created Space to Inspire. The goal? To create a just, equitable, diverse, and inclusive, or Jedi space, and encourage other artists and poets to get involved. And one of my big goals was to bring as many people along on this journey as possible. And I thought, what better way to do that than through art and poetry? On her journey, she brought some pieces from the space to inspire artists and poets. During this presentation, she returned the art pieces to their owners. It is such a pleasure to be here, um, to be able to give you back your art and poetry today. Thank you. In Phoenix, Ashley Hudjaleski, Cronkite News. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us.